All right, well, the PBOC's latest efforts to shore up China's economy, not giving the global boost it did to stocks after its initial policy announcements. For more on the outlook for equities, let's bring in Steve Sosnick. He's Interactive Brokers' chief market strategist. Steve, it's great to see you. So we did get a little bit of, uh, I guess, excitement, optimism uh, into the market yesterday in the heels of the news that we got out of China. Of course, that's coupled with the Fed decision last week. I'm curious what you make of the market at these levels. Hey, Shauna, great to see you. Um, you know, I think in general, in, investors should be rooting for the Chinese to succeed at this. Um, you know, there's certainly there's certainly concerns that the Chinese economy has been under a lot of pressure, uh, much more than they might be letting on, because it, it, there's always been rumors that their numbers are a bit massaged, and that you know the fact that they're willing to take undertake uh, sequential large measures. Uh, to stimulate the economy is a sign that uh, certainly at least the, the the powers in charge in Beijing are a bit nervous. But this is something I know. There's a lot of back and forth rhetoric about China, et cetera. As as U.S. as U.S. investors, we should be rooting for the Chinese to succeed because the problem is if they don't, um, that's not good for the global economy overall. I think we we have to remember how in the in the aftermath of the global financial crisis, one of the things that helped us dramatically was that the Chinese economy was expanding so rapidly, and as a result, it had spillover effects into the rest of the world. The flip side is, if their economy shrinks dramatically, that will also have spillover effects into the rest of the world, just as it seems that things are slowing down, not necessarily getting bad here, but definitely off their off their rapid pace. So this this should be good news, although I think the idea that, you know, I've had some people say that, you know, they brought out a bazooka when they needed a howitzer. So. Uh, that there's a lot of conflicting views as to whether this is actually sufficient given the, the levels of issues in China. Yeah, and then you had China Beige Book uh, officials saying earlier today that they uh, did think that it was sufficient moving forward. So a lot of conflicting reports, Steve. Having said that, I am curious if the stimulus news coming out of China was enough to make the market excited for like what felt like 30 seconds to me, what is going to be the next big catalyst for the market? Is it going to be the labor data that we're getting in later this week or is it something else? Well, I think you both hit it in the in the intro. I think the PCE is the first is the first one. Remember the dual mandate. It's and and Powell went out of his way to remind us of the dual mandate. It's stable prices. It's maximum employment. Well, we learn about the state. We learn if prices are becoming stable um, on Friday with the PCE. So that will be that will be number one. That is the Fed's preferred inflation measure. Um, you know, looking at the month over month core, which is probably the most relevant. The, if the predictions come in at point two. That's at least consistent enough with the disinflationary story and the 2% target. Um, so any deviation from that can move the market one way or the other. And then, of course, the following Friday, um, we have jobs numbers, which, which those will certainly have an impact on the market one way or the other, because, you know, we've really sort of shifted in some ways almost to, you know, uh, to declaring victory over the prices, whether or not that's fair or not. But certainly now everybody's focused on employment, and this is this is how we find out what's going on in the labor market. So, Steve, what should investors be doing? We talk about the fact that defensive has, defensive plays have certainly caught a bid here. We talk about the fact that maybe technology won't be the leaders here if we do see this next leg higher. What are you advising, or I guess where do you see the most opportunity today? Well, right now, things I think are very fully valued, Shauna. That 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 could be one of the issues here, and that's that does make it a bit tough because there's there's not a lot of uh, great values to be found, whether or not in the growth stocks that have taken us to the party or the value stocks that have um, caught a bid uh, recently. I think in general, value stocks are preferable. I think in general. Um, one of the things that you will not go too wrong with is finding stocks with sustainable dividends. Those tend to be value stocks as opposed to growth stocks, although a lot of the growth stocks are now paying dividends. Um, but you know, I think right now the key is if you're looking at if you're looking at a potentially lower interest rate environment, it's not a bad idea to lock in decent yields in stocks that can, you know, as long as those stocks have the cash flow to support those dividends and are not borrowing heavily uh, to pay them off, because that adds a level of risk. So that's where I would be looking. I, I can't get too granular just because, you know, mm -hmm. more, you know, that's the nature of my job. But mm -hmm. I would I would look toward uh, value oriented stocks with a solid dividend. And I, I think that that will help you both get capital appreciation and income um, in, a, in a time where income might become more scarce. 
Steve, great insight as always. Steve Zosnick, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Interactive Brokers Chief Markets Economist, thank you.